So check this out. We have this great little envelope that came in the mail here, but you can see that we have an issue with how it posted. Welcome back to the channel. Let's look at some incredible blue agate and get to cutting and polishing it. This is a package from some friends and uh, clients that have bought quite a bit of jewelry. And um, I love doing commissions for these guys. And um, they find a lot of their own material. So I have three rocks here, which is what I was supposed to get. And thank goodness, it's a good idea to do an inner bag or a sealed lining of some sort with the mail, just in case. What I'm supposed to be doing with these guys is coming up with a jewelry design for a ring. This first beautiful candidate is a carnelian and it's got gorgeous color. It looks like it's got some inclusions, some crack inclusions. So don't know if that one will work out. Um, one of my favorite ways to prepare rocks, uh, <laughs> which is a bit unorthodox, is to actually break them. And they often break where the inclusions are and stay together where they're strong. And um, that way the, ch the rock chooses the shape that it gets to be. Here's contestant number two. Wow, this is a really cool find. Um, you can see some differing in the material. It looks like we, again, a carnelian, uh, which is pretty awesome from the valley. We get lots of those. Um, got some darkness here and then some light here, which looks like they're uh, quartz inclusions. Um, looks like there could be some druzy there. Uh, beautiful stone here be very cool to work with some that was adjacent to each other uh, this is kind of a window into looking at how to prepare a stone for lapidary and for jewelry use like for lapidary with the jewelry application in mind this last one um, super interesting even more interesting now that I've gotten it wet let me See if I can't get it right for you guys. So you can see some uh, some quartz and agate banding here, um, almost looking like it comes to the center of a vug here. Wow, yeah, you know, all the way into the center. That's a an interesting um, time pressure and heat story that it's telling. And then as you can see out here towards the, the outside, we've definitely got some blue. This is the stone in which they were hoping that the, the ring could come from, but uh, we have three possibilities, uh, which is always nice. Just in case something happens, we've got some alternatives. But what's super awesome about this invitation to do this commission is that all threes, three of these stones are found by them and also they're beautiful so I've got some wonderful material to work with here. Time to bring out the sledgehammer. You heard me right. This gorgeous stone is going to choose its shapes. And oh, what a beautiful break. Three good stones that'll make great freeform capuchons. Spinning up the high-tech flat lap, we start with a 100 grit diamond disc to cut the stones to the form that suits the break. You can see that I've nibbled on this one a little bit already. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get this to the shape that it wants to be, but the time is well spent and worth it. And magically, voila, check this out. It's crazy how these things show off their inner geometry. And this one framed the fortification lines and the quartz very nicely. So we started with the biggest chunk of them all. That's kind of uh, my angle of attack is always to <laughs> take on the hardest uh, first. And then we take on this triangle. 
So it's already showing the shape that it wants to be. We just have to take away the rough edges and smooth it all out. A basic cutting rule is that you have to get down to the very flat of a stone. So there can't be any divots or any high spots or else you'll never get a polish. Right now, what we're trying to do is just smooth everything out so that we have a front and a back and the sides so that we can get them onto a dop stick. One of the most fun parts about cutting is seeing the stone for the first time starting to look like what it's going to be. Look at that gemminess. I'm so excited about this. I mentioned before that we were preparing these for the dop sticks. You can see that I'm shaping it so that it's ready to go also into a setting. This is when I'm working on the base and the girdle for the stone. Well, here's a tricky break. What do you want to be? I'm thinking it looks like another diamond. And so I'll grind away and see what kinds of inclusions and problems it has. And of course, it'll go ahead and decide what it's going to be when it's ready. What a lucky guess, a diamond it is. And look at the depth of color. This one has some really interesting fortification lines, almost botroidal. Yeah, and that shape would look very fetching on someone's finger. Okay, revving up the dop station, gonna stick these stones. Dancing on top of their dops, we can refine the shapes of the stones and make sure the surfaces are finished smoothly. Taking time on this step, really being thorough through the shaping and refining of the cabochon will ensure smooth sailing through the other stages. This is not where to rush it. We finish the stones on the 100 grit, then the 180 diamond disc to nuance the shapes and tops of the cabs. This brown disc is a 325 gritter mesh. The higher the number, the smaller the diamond particles. These smaller diamonds will erase the bigger scratches left from the 180 grit disc. It's imperative that we eliminate every deep scratch or we'll have a cloudy outcome. Roll in the red 600 grit disc. I want to take a moment here to mention machine hygiene. After each disc, I wash the frame of the flat lap. Why? Because the particles left from the larger diamond discs can scratch your project. Oh, there's nothing like getting a glossy polish going and having a rogue 180 grit diamond come along and deep scratch the face of your pretty gem. It's tragic. To prevent that from happening, always wash your machine frame, discs, and gems between each step and always use clean water. Blue 1200 grit disc to match these gorgeous blue stones. In between each of these steps, I used a jeweler's looper magnification to find out whether I had eliminated the scratches from the step before or not. This takes as long as it takes. There's no set time for this, like cook for five minutes on this side, then flip it. But, like I mentioned before, it's worth the time. Just look at these. They're dry, but they already are looking glossy. If you get to this stage and you still have clouds, you need to go back a stage or two and erase the problems. The last disc we'll use on these gems is the cerium oxide embedded disc. This is a great polish for silicates such as obsidian and opal. And you can use this or diamond polish for agates. Once you're sure for sure that they're finished, and this can take some practice, pop those gems in the freezer. Yes, there's nothing like an ice cold pint of blue agates. The cold helps free the gems from their waxy dop. No matter how long these ever take, it's always amazing to see the finished gem. This one incredibly fancy with waves of fortification lines, botroidal bubbles, and a glimmering quartz window. This second smaller diamond shape swirls magnificently inside like a paisley party. This one is definitely going in a ring. And this triangle, fortification lines draping across, alternating with bubbles and quartz. It turns out they love this stone so much 
They ordered two rings. I don't blame them. If you enjoyed watching these gems be born, make sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. If you valued the tutorial aspect of this video, the companion blog with tips and materials list is at ozonefineart.com. Most importantly, thank you for watching and keep creating. Thank you.